Five years ago, I had no money. My marriage was rocky, and I had a business that wasn't making money. So it's not a great day. (laughs) But one word from Father shifted my whole life. has caused hope to be awakened in me. In that word, Father showed me what needed to happen in me first, and then it would cause a chain reaction in others. Let me explain what I mean by that. Invite you into this word. I'm here five years ago, this month actually, five years ago. I got born again again. I'm telling you guys, some of us need to get born again again. You grew up in church, you've been doing the whole thing, you know it all, listen, you need to get born again again. If you're not crying every time you hear his voice, I'm telling you guys, you need to think about getting born again again to a a much, much deeper place. But five years ago this month, Father said, when you return to me, I'll return to you. And he says, I'm bringing you in a season of repentance. And he says, as you go into a deeper season of repentance, I'll bring others into a season of repentance as well. And as you spend time with me, he said, I'll enrich you as a man. And he says, you will bring others into the secret place with you. You will bring others into a deeper place. And he said, but it starts with you first. And he said, and I'll create an explosion in your business, but it's all tied in you returning to me. See, Father talked to me straight. And he can do that because I'm a son who will respond. And I love that. I love when he does that. You know why? I love his correction. Do you know why? Because I know he's thinking about me. (laughs) See, we need to understand that. When you get corrected by a righteous man or you get corrected by a friend and you understand and hear the voice of God behind it, you should be receiving that knowing that God's thinking about you. Knowing that Father's thinking about you. You wouldn't be corrected if he wasn't thinking about you. But he's thinking about you because he's for you. He's not against you. You understand? There's a difference. We see it through the wrong lens because we've been rejection and dealt with the spirit of rejection all of our life. So when we hear correction from somebody and we know it's the voice of God, we wrestle with it because we wrestled with the spirit of rejection all of our life in the orphan spirit. But now it's a different place when he corrects me and he talks to me straight. I love it because I know he's thinking about me. And I know he's for me and he's not against me. But he told me, he says, when you return to me, I'll return to you. And I'll create an explosion in your business. But it starts with you. So when I got that word, I began to do everything that he began to tell, that he told me that day to do. I began to get alone with him. 5.30 the next morning, on Monday morning, I was such a wreck after that word on Sunday afternoon. I couldn't even, couldn't even tell my wife. I was just in tears. I couldn't even explain what the Lord had told me. But I began to do everything that he told me to do in that word. I began to return to him. And I began to sit with him. And every morning at 5.30, I would get up. And I didn't know what to do. But it didn't matter. Because it was quality heart. And I would sit there. And I would say, I worship you. I praise you. I return to you. I repent for everything that's gotten in the way of me and you. And I'm coming back to you. I love you. And I would say, won't you come into the room? Now, he's already in the room. He's there. Holy Spirit's inside you, so he's in the room. But he still honored that quality of heart. And his presence would come into the room so thick. And I didn't know what to do, so I'd lay down on the floor. And I'd encounter him. And he'd bring me back to that original place of returning to him. And I would cry, and I would have encounters, and he would take me up into his heart where he would show me, and he'd say, Ryan, I burn for all creation. And I would be in so many passages at one time where... And, I, and there would be songs that would be playing that I didn't even know, but I would encounter God. Why? Because I understood that in order for hope to be awakened in me, it had to start with me first. It had to be something that I did. There was a responsibility on my part that it started with me first. Whenever I heard his voice that day and he spoke that word, hope was awakened in me. But listen, if hope is not awakened in you first... You can never make hope awakened in others. 
If hope is not awakened in you first, you cannot awaken hope in others. We cannot awaken hope in Beaumont. If you're still struggling with the way that you see Beaumont, you don't see hope being awakened in Beaumont. You see, Father is not struggling with the way he sees Beaumont. He sees it as racial reconciliation taking place. He sees it as a destination place. He sees the fulfillment of Beaumont and he speaks from fulfillment backwards. He doesn't wrestle with where Beaumont's at now. Fulfillment is in his heart. Fulfillment is in his heart. So he speaks from that place. He works from fulfillment first. That's how hope is awakened in a city is because hope is awakened in you first. You want hope to be awakened in this church? Come through those doors with hope awakened in you first. Come sit in your row and allow hope to become contagious because it's become awakened in you first. Because long before the day ever started and long before church ever started, you got up at 5.30 because you couldn't wait to be with him. And he took you so far into the scripture that you saw through the word and encountered the word and hope was awakened. And you couldn't wait to get to church. And you couldn't wait to share what the Lord did for you and what he said for you because hope has been awakened. And guess what your whole row catches on fire why because it started with you first it can happen it happened with me man when my life got wrecked and shifted all I did was go around telling everybody what what father was doing in my life man I'm telling you guys hey they would say hey how's it been going I hadn't seen you while man let me tell you the Lord's been speaking to me. I've been waking up early. I've been having these encounters. Man, our business has shifted. Man, we have money. My credit score went from like a negative to like a positive. I mean, man, God's doing incredible things. He even healed my credit score. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm telling you. It's unbelievable. My life has changed. And you know what? People started showing up because we started talking about it. People started coming to the class because we started talking about the class. Man, you got to go. You got to come hear this guy. You got to come hear this guy, Dan. He teaches. It's like from another realm, man. It's, it's unreal. You got to come listen, man. And you know what? They would come. And they would come. Listen, you got to experience this worship. Man, you got to hear the voice of God. Man, I started telling everybody because hope was awakened in me. Hope was awakened in me first. But if it doesn't start with you first, we'll never awaken hope in others. God, you got to do something in my workplace. God, you got to do something in my business. God, you got to do something in my family. Really, what we need to say is, God, you got to do something in me. God, you got to do something in me. I want to burn for you. Stop looking for others to take their place and you take your place. Stop looking for your family or your spouse or your kids to take their place and you take your place in intercession and call them into that place of fulfillment. Oh, if my kids wouldn't do this and oh, if my spouse wouldn't do this, call them into the place of fulfillment. Talk like father talks. He doesn't see a prodigal son. He says, come home, my son. I'm ready for you to come home. You're my son. You're not a prodigal son. You're my son. I love you. I'm calling you home. He saw the fulfillment of that prodigal son. Why? Hope has to be awakened in us first, guys. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 says this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. So there's a key here. And Dan has done an amazing job explaining this the last couple of times that he's preached and talking about this. And this is the real key. And let me explain to you. I'm going to settle down a little bit. (laughs) This is the real key. Jesus said you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it. He said that you need to love your neighbor as you love your what? Okay, so what's the key here? The key to loving your neighbor is loving yourself first. Well, that seems selfish. Read John 17. Read John 17. Jesus in John 17, three different times, he says this, as you have loved me, Father, I have loved them. The love that you have given me, I have given them. Three different times in John 17, he talks about how Father loved him. 
What do you think that Jesus understood? That he was loved by Father. How was he able to stand in front of these 11 guys, 12 guys, 11 guys really, and speak right to their destiny and not wrestle with where they were at? How was he able to look at Peter and call his destiny when he knew the mess that Peter was in? And he said, Peter, you're going to be a part of building my church. You're going to be the start of movement. And you're going to deny me three times, but I'm not wrestling with that, Peter. Because I see the fulfillment of your destiny. How could Jesus do that? Because he understood how much Father loved him, and he loved himself, so therefore he could love others. That is the key to loving others and awakening hope in others. It has to start with you first. You have to be the one to respond to allow hope to be awakened in you. Don't think about changing the world right now. That will take care of itself. We don't even have to think about changing Beaumont. Yes, that's the ultimate goal. But let it start with you in the morning. Let hope be awakened in you first tomorrow morning. Take the weight of the world off of your shoulders, the weight of your family off your shoulders. It doesn't need to be there anyway because his yoke is easy and his burden is light and we're yoked to him. The weight shouldn't be there anyway. But take that stuff off and just be alone with him and allow hope to be awakened again. When hope is awakened again and you return back to that place, everything around you will begin to be transformed. But it starts with you. You will naturally express what you know and what you love. When this process of awakening happens in you first, you will begin to express what has been awakened in you. This is evangelism 101. When hope has been awakened in you first... This is evangelism. You will naturally awaken hope in others. Because you see, what you care about and what you love and what you know and what you've learned, you want to express. What you love, your favorite team, you will express your love for your favorite team. You will act like a wild person for your favorite team. We, the things that we love, whatever it is that you do, if it's sports to basket weaving or I don't know what you're into, but you will express and you will talk about with someone who's willing to listen for hours straight about what you love. You will express that. That's evangelism 101. I don't want to tell you to awaken hope in others and force you and get you to manufacture something that you feel like you have to do. I want hope to be awakened in you first for you to become the bonfire and people to come watch you burn. That's what needs to happen. When you catch on fire and you become the bonfire, people come to watch you burn. And naturally, you will express freedom because you love him and because you're free. Just like I was five years ago. Listen, you got to come. You got to experience worship. Man, it's amazing. I'm hearing his voice. I'm in this secret place. I naturally became evangelistic because of what he was already doing in my life. Because he was burning in me. See, what produces life in you will produce life through you. What produces life in you will produce life through you. This is why the word is so vital in our life and encounters with Father are so vital. And let me talk about that for a second. We talked about that with the Dream Center guys this morning. What produces life in you will produce life through you. This, this is power. Okay? I don't want to read the word to just read the word. I want to read the word to encounter the author. I want to read the word to encounter the word. I don't want to read because I'm supposed to read because pastor tells me I should read my word. So I'm going to get up and I'm just going to start reading. Listen, you're just reading to read. Okay, and you'll gain some head knowledge. I'm not trying to be mean because that used to be me. You'll gain some head knowledge, but there will be no anointing and no power behind it. You won't see in the spirit and access the things in the heavenly realms if you don't understand how to look through the lens and encounter the word. Do you know how you encounter the word? You hunger for it. You hunger for it. You meditate on it. You look at it day and night. What does he say in Psalms 1? 
Blessed is the man who not walks in the, you know, or stands in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the past of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his word and in his law, he meditates on it day and night. You know what that word meditate means? It means to talk to yourself. You can ask my wife. I talk to myself all the time. It's not creepy. It's awesome. I'm talking the word to myself. If I die and my life is hidden with Christ in God, then that means that I should seek those things that are above. So, Father, I seek those things which are above so that I can set my mind on those things that I seek. I ask you right now to show me those things that are above where I'm seated in you. What is above right now? What does it look like? Father, I thank you that there's an open heaven that I can see and have an access and there's a door open. I want to see what's going on in heaven so I can set my mind on those things. That's what I do. That's what we do. That's how you encounter the word. You don't just read the word to read, but you encounter it so that it can take on shape and form inside of you so that the word can become flesh, John 1, 14, and the world would behold his glory. How is the world gonna behold his glory? By the word becoming flesh. By you encountering the word and you becoming the word. You meditating and hungering for the word so much that you chew on it and you meditate on it and you desire it and you just can't put it down. And oh, I read it when I wake up in the morning. I read it when I go to bed and I want to encounter the word and I ask the questions father what does this mean show me what this means father me holy spirit father me holy spirit teach me spirit of truth teach me what does this mean see we ask those questions to get the right answers and we're not afraid to ask the questions because the right questions get the right answers I can't read Ephesians 1 3 where it says That we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And just read over that. Okay, wait. Wait a second. I've already been blessed. Not I will be. Already been blessed. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That You could spend months right there. And you can ask this question. Father, show me what the spiritual blessings are. What are the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus? What is my inheritance in you in the heavenly places? I pray that the eyes of my imagination, Ephesians 1.18, would be opened up so that I would see and I would know what is that place so that I can access it. Because once you go there and once you access it, you have access to it and then you can demonstrate it. Guys, we're talking about encountering the word and having encounters with Father so that it would awaken hope in you. You see, I'm leading you to a place you say, how can hope be awakened in me? Encountering the word and encountering Father. We should be encountering him every day. Every day we should be encountering him. We should be hungry and humble to encounter him. Not to just spend time with him. Not to just have a devotional. But encounter him and encounter his word. That is what awakens hope. Because every time I have an encounter with him, like this five years ago, or every time I get corrected by him, or every time I sing a love song and he takes me into a place of his heart and he shows me, every time, hope is awakened. When he showed me how much he burned for creation one day, and he said, Ryan, I burned for creation, and I could see creation, and his heart was literally on fire, and it was burning for creation, and I just cried for 30 minutes till I had a massive headache. I cried so hard. You know, when I got up from the floor, I didn't feel the heaviness of that. I felt encouraged. I felt it energized. Number one, because I heard his voice. Number two, I know because he loves us. And he's burning for us. And you know what? There was no spirit of heaviness. Oh, I felt God's heart today. And oh man, it's just the end of the world. No. I said, man, my father burns for all creation. Do you understand how much he loves you? I heard his voice this morning. He loves me. He burns for me. I felt his heart. See, when you encounter that and you encounter that word, you know what had happened when I got off the floor? Hope was awakened. This is pretty good, huh? (laughs) I was like, all right, we're connecting here, amen? I'm a man, Ron, you do, yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, with the notes. Where am I? Okay, if it doesn't start with you, it won't be awakened in them. We need to stop looking for others to take their place and we need to take our place. It started with Jesus understanding how much Father loved him. 
the process. John baptized me. No, Lord, it's you that needs to baptize me. John, do this so that all would be fulfilled. John, this has the process happened in Jesus. He understood the love of the Father. He encountered the love of the Father. That's how hope is awakened, guys. If it started with him, it really needs to start with us. How is hope awakened in us? This is where I'm, what I'm leading up to. Father spoke to me one morning in worship, and he said, I need you to walk in freedom. Just in the middle of worship, he said, I need you to walk in freedom. Let me explain that. You would say, well, God doesn't need anything. Okay. We got to learn that Jesus is the head and we are the body. <laughs> Separate the head from the body, you're not going to get a lot done. Okay, we are the body of Christ. So the Lord, when he says, I need you to do this, okay, he needs you to do that because you are the body, okay? He works through and loves to work and partner through all of creation. So when he said, I need you to walk in freedom, I knew through discernment what he meant. He was showing me that when you learn, there's a difference in you having freedom and you walking in freedom, the word, John 8, 36, says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. We have freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord? Where's the Spirit of the Lord? Inside of me. Where's the Holy of Holies? Inside of me. So where's freedom? It's there. But there's a difference in me having freedom and accessing that freedom and learning to walk in that freedom. There's a difference. Okay? I experience freedom here. Right here. I experience that freedom. I've been free. In his world, it's already done. Ryan, I see you fulfilled. I see your business fulfilled. I see all of your workers fulfilled. I see all these things fulfilled. I experienced freedom. But then I needed to learn how to walk in freedom. And there's a difference. And the walking in freedom and the discovery of the truth is the key to awakening hope in us, which is the key to awakening hope in others. But there's that place where we need to learn to walk in freedom instead of just having freedom. But that takes a hunger and a humility to discover the truth of who we are and who we are in him. Because the discovery of truth is what truly awakens hope. Every time you have an encounter with him or have an encounter with, uh, with his word or you hear his voice, that is the discovery of his truth. And when you encounter and discover what his truth is, hope is awakened. When I first got a hold of the scripture, Galatians 3.13, it says, because he took on the curse for me or because he became the curse, I was redeemed from the curse. What is the curse? Sin, poverty, sickness. That's the curse. I was redeemed. When I got a hold of that scripture and when it came alive in me and I discovered that, I drove around in my truck all day and I cried because I was so moved that I had been redeemed. And then somebody else had became and took on the curse for me. I didn't deserve that, but now I've been redeemed. I was so moved, I just cried all day, guys. I, I just cried all day thinking about that scripture. And that was the word taking on shape and form and becoming alive in me. But that was the discovery of that truth that awakened hope in me. That was the discovery of that truth. Not the truth of the world that doesn't awaken hope your bad news and what you heard on social media doesn't awaken hope i don't even want to hear about it i want to think on these things that are noble that are just that are pure that are lovely that if anything be of good report or anything be praiseworthy think on these things i don't even want to hear about it because i want to know about his fulfillment because that's what awakens hope I want to discover the truth of what he sees not what the world sees because that's what awakens hope john 8 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free it's the truth that you commit to and you consummate that brings the freedom okay let me let me explain what that means that you commit and you consummate that word know there three stages of knowing there i love this three stages of knowing in that word know the first stage of knowing is you're coming in contact which means you're hearing what I'm saying right now, you're coming in contact with what I'm saying. If this is the first time, if this is the 30th or 50th time, if you have yet to commit to this right here of hope being awakened in you, you're just coming in contact with this and what I'm saying and what I've encountered myself. So tonight you came in contact, but then you take home the notes 
And tonight before you go to bed or tomorrow, you wake up an hour early, 45 minutes early, whatever it is, or 30 minutes, you start somewhere and you begin to go through these notes and you begin to read these scriptures and pray these scriptures in and here. Now you've committed to it. That's the second stage. And then the third stage is you consummate it, which is a higher degree, which is the word becoming, taking on shape and form and becoming flesh. Now you've consummated after you've committed to it and you've committed to it and you've hungered for it and you've humbled yourself and you committed to know his truth and there's the discovery of all of this truth, but you don't learn it all at one time. Back here five years ago, where did I start? 5.30 in the morning. I praise you. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm here. I worship you. And then guess what? You know what I learned? Holy Spirit started to teach me the secret place, and he started to lead me. I want you to sing in tongues, okay? I'll sing in tongues. I want you to pray in tongues. I want you to go to John 17. Holy Spirit started to lead me, and I started to learn how to hear his voice. And you know what? I'm learning every day. And every day is not fireworks and, and, and all of this stuff, but every day we go in there to just sit with him. And it's the discovery of truth. Hey, Ryan, because you came after me and because you didn't have a agenda and a plan, I'm gonna unlock a secret for you today. And I'm gonna reveal a part of my heart and a secret that's in my heart for you, for your business, for your family. And I'm gonna reveal these things because today you're gonna discover more truth. And guess what's gonna be awakened? Hope. It's awesome. I'm telling you guys, this is not complicated. It's not complicated. You know what it takes? Hunger and humility. I felt the fear of the Lord when I said that. Hunger and humility is what it takes. All of those guys that we love to talk about, Smith Wigglesworth and all that, they had the same 24 hours in the day that I do. It's they chose to do something different with their 24 hours and let me tell you something if you read about smith wigglesworth he was praying in tongues for 30 minutes reading the word for 30 minutes praying in tongues for 30 minutes read that may not be your formula but let me tell you something he went after it and that's why he raised the dead you know why because of hunger and humility and for hope to be awakened there has to be the discovery of truth there has to be the commitment to the discovery of who I am and who he is in me. You're not gonna figure it out in one day. An explosion didn't happen in our business in one day, but it began to happen. And he began to unveil his secrets to me. And then I would learn. And then I would get puffed up in knowledge and I would come in in knowledge thinking I learned something. And he says, you came in knowledge this morning. You didn't come in love. And then I'd lay down on the floor and repent. (laughs) Guess what? That was the discovery of truth, though. You know what it still did? It still awakened hope in me. It didn't beat me down. You know why it didn't beat me down? Because he taught me what his truth is. I'm love, Ryan. When you come to me, you come in love. You don't come in how much you've learned. (laughs) Can you imagine how small I look thinking I had learned something? He's God. I mean, we're going to spend all of eternity figuring out how big he is. I mean, seriously, they never get bored singing holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They never get bored of that. And we're thinking, oh, I'm going to come to the secret place because I've learned some stuff. And, you know, and I, the secret things the Lord, uh, you know, belong to him. And those are reveals I've gained like two and a half secrets. And it's like, so, you know, I'm just full of knowledge. And then he says, hey, real soft, real soft. You came in knowledge this morning. You didn't come in love. And then he said, and that's how you do with people drive that sword in a little deeper but you know what (laughs) he talks to me direct he talks to me straight you know why because I said I give you all my heart I'm all yours what are the things inside me that need to go here comes the sword here comes the piercing but it's good though means we're getting the junk out right everybody good we're almost done thank you Pastor Christy Love that. Thank you. Okay. Let's talk about accessing it. What, what time? Eight o'clock? Right? Is that what time? Or no, no, no. I need to be walked. Oh, wow. Three minutes. 
I'm not going to make that. Okay, that's Pastor Suzanne for the recording that said that. So I just want Pastor to hear that. That was your wife that said that. I'm going to be. I'm going. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. I'm, I'm not going to take the full because I. I don't want to lose you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. If I deposited a million dollars in your bank. He did. Okay. So I have three minutes. This. Oh, okay. This is going to have to be supernatural. This is really going to have to be supernatural. Okay. Let's go through it quickly. I tell you what, let's skip this part. Let's go straight into, straight into two points. Number two, okay. Or halfway down the page. How do you encounter truth? Okay, let's get to that. How do you encounter truth? Number one, you commit to knowing it to discovering it. Since there are truths about me, I want to know about what are the truths. I want to commit to knowing the discovery of truth about who I am because I want to hope to be awakened in me. For example, Ephesians 3.19, I love this verse, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. That means it's a love of Christ that you experience, that you encounter, because it's beyond knowledge. So it doesn't mean that you should know the love of Christ here, okay? It means that you should be experiencing and encountering the love of Christ because it passes knowledge. It, it transcends knowledge. And he said, so that you would be filled with the fullness of God, to be filled with the fullness, with all the fullness of God. Fullness means a ship with no empty cargo, a house with no empty rooms. You're full. Whenever I read that verse, that's what I'm going after. I want to walk in the fullness of God. It's, it's just gripped me. So now I commit to discovering what is your fullness look like? How do I walk in your fullness? I hunger and I humble myself to go after these things and I'm not afraid to ask the questions so that I can discover the truth of what his fullness is. I don't want to repeat a verse to just repeat a verse and not know what it means. I want to ask my Father to father me and Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to guide me into all truth and explain to me what does this mean and what does this look like because the world is longing to see a demonstration of it. Because if the world saw a demonstration of Christians who were walking in the fullness of God, they would want it. They would want it. You wouldn't have to evangelize. They would come up to you and go, what do you do? What's on you? What is it? You smell. You, man, you feel. I, I, man, it's, it's they taste and see that the Lord is good because you're walking in his fullness. But it's the discovery and the hunger and the commitment to the truth that will unlock that truth in your life, that will reveal the secret to that truth, that will awaken hope in you. But it's not reading the verse to read the verse and say, wow, that's great. That's wonderful. No, it's hungering for it. If I don't experience it, I'm going to die. It's that kind of hunger. If I don't encounter it, I can't keep going. I'm so hungry for you, Lord. I want to become the demonstration of your fullness. Because I don't want to take a card and read three steps and how to lead people born again. I want to light myself on fire and people to watch me burn. That's evangelism. That's what Jesus did. That's how he lived. But there's the commitment to that, the discovery of that. And when you hunger for it bad enough, you'll get it. Because what you aim for, guys, is what you're going to get. What you want is what you're going to get. I'm telling you guys, we are where we are because of what we wanted. We are where we are because of the thoughts that we think and because of the choices that we made. There is no way around that. It's because you wanted something else that led you to that place. We say, well, man, pastor's different. Dan's different. Charmaine's different. No, no, no. He's no respecter of persons. It's they wanted it. They wanted it. They had the same 24 hours in the day, but they spent it in a different way. 
learning to hear his voice, learning to encounter him, learning to encounter his word, learning to look through the lens of the word, learning how to prophesy, learning how to pray. They gave up their time to become the word. It awakened hope in them, and then they became the demonstration. They were the millionaire who went to the bank and actually accessed the money. The rest of us sat at home and did whatever, never accessed what was really in our heavenly account, and we never got to demonstrate it to the world. Because so many of us are millionaires in that bank account, but we're living like beggars. Because it's there, but we haven't learned to access it. And we haven't made a withdrawal on it. And we haven't hungered enough. And we haven't forsaken all. Where, man, I'm going to the tomb because he's my first love. When I wake up, I don't care if there's a stone there. No, I'm going. I'm going to anoint him. Well, Ron, my boss doesn't like me. Man, I don't care. I'm, I'm waking up to anoint him. I'm in love with him. And I want to discover everything that he thinks about me and everything that is in me. That's what, that's what awakens hope, God's. Number two, you allow the truth to be consummated to work in you. Not only do you commit to knowing the truth that awakens hope, but you allow the truth to be consummated and you allow it to work in you. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 119, 130. They're all my favorite. I say that. <laughs> They're all just so good. <laughs> but this is this, this, this right here, this scripture, this is a weapon. I'm telling you guys, this scripture right here will bring breakthrough in your life. Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Holy Spirit just reminded me of this. Let me explain what this means. I was talking to Dan one day and I'm not trying to highlight Dan, I'm trying to use him as an example. I was talking to Dan and I was just the struggle with the business and all of these things, and man, what, what my, my guys, why won't they act like family? It's like this, and it's like that, and there's just constant commotion. Why won't these guys act like this? And here comes the word. Here comes the voice of the Lord, and he says this, when you start seeing them like sons. Now listen, now listen. I didn't hear Dan Varela. I heard the voice of my father. I heard the word. And there's the entrance point of the word. And I could choose to wrestle with that and say, yeah, but Dan, you don't even understand. I mean, there's like all these, and you can brush that off or you can allow that word to enter in. And you know what? It doesn't always feel good. And sometimes my flesh and my soul wants to reason because the soul wants to protect itself. And sometimes it wants to reason and it wants to resist that sword. Or you can allow that sword and that word to enter in and to bring light and expose the darkness. See, that's a weapon. And you know what? That awakens hope. It awakens hope. It's not the condemnation and the guilt. It's because now there's the truth of his word. And now I know his truth, and now hope is being awakened because now I know what to do. If I treat him like sons and father him like sons and draw him close like sons, and when they make a mistake, we draw him as a, and as a son and as I see him like son, now I'm gaining his truth, and hope is being awakened in me, and hope is being awakened in others. But you know what I did with that word? I committed to it and I allowed it to consummate. I brought it in deeper and I allowed that sword to go in deeper and I allow it to pierce me and it wakes me up in the middle of the night and he says, hey, I want to show you something. You're wrestling with this and you, you need to repent or whatever it is. Don't wrestle with that because it's the entrance of his word. And you know what? We're on the discovery, the journey of the discovery of truth and I don't want to resist his word. You know why? Because I want hope to be awakened. Do you know why? Because it's the key to hope being awakened in others. Your breakthrough is someone else's breakthrough. 
right here, five years ago. My breakthrough, (laughs) our breakthrough was the key to breaking through to others. The only reason I'm here, I'm telling you guys, it would not have been in, in the old platform, the old foundation. The only reason I'm here is because hope was awakened and it led to your breakthrough tonight. And it's not, it's not me. It's not that Ryan is this or Dan is this or Pastor is this, Pastor Suzanne is this or Pastor Seth this. It's not that. He's no respecter of persons. Just we came to that point where we said, you know what? Now I'm all in. I'm committing to your truth. And I'm going to allow your truth to be consummated in me and I'm not going back. And when your word pierces me, I'm going to let it go in deeper. Because I want hope to be awakened in me. I want to become the revival so that I can start the revival in my city, my community, my neighborhood, my street, my family. It's got to happen in me first. You'll love your neighbor when you love yourself. I put some scriptures down at the bottom. Encounter the truth of this. And these are scriptures that we've just got a hold of the last few years that have really just become like weapons and have just become foundational scriptures. Genesis 126, you're made in the image of God. Let us make man in our image. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Listen, these are keys, guys. These are weapons. These are keys to growth. These are keys to awakening hope. And it's not just reading them that's going to awaken the hope. It's the commitment to them and consummating. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. uh, If any man be in Christ, he's a brand new creation. He's a new creation, new prototype, never before seen before. Brand new Ryan Castile, never before seen. That's exciting. I want to know and learn how to walk in that. That's a key. Galatians 3.13, because he took on the curse and he became for the curse for us, we have been redeemed from the curse. Okay, that's a weapon. That's something that I want to know. I want to experience. I want to encounter Ephesians 2 about being seated in heavenly places. Ephesians 2.10 about being his workmanship and him creating good works in advance that you would accomplish through Christ Jesus. Okay, workmanship, Romans 8, 11, the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives and quickens your mortal body. That is the key to understanding the power that is resonating within you. That is a scripture that you need to commit to. Okay, you will not look at your body the same when sickness tries to attack your body when you understand that the spirit of the living God is quickening your mortal body. You will understand that when you go to lay your hands on the sick, that there is resurrection power in you. You just got to let him out. You're self-conscious and we're this and we're that. Listen, there's power in you. You need to get to know the power. But you know what the key to getting to know the power? Committing to it. Discovering the truth. Walking in it. Demonstrating. Accessing the million dollars so that you can demonstrate it. Romans uh, 8.17 Man, I love that one. If you're children of God, then you're heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Man, I'm telling you, that is, do you want to crush poverty? Yes. Romans 8, 17, understanding what it means to be an heir. And listen, I haven't got it figured out. I don't have it figured out. He wakes me up in the middle of the night. He said, you don't see yourself as an heir. It's why you wrestle with finances or why you doubt or why you fear. You don't understand yet or see yourself as an heir of me. We got to allow the eyes of our imagination to be opened up. We got to encounter these places, guys. It's not just about reading. It's about encountering. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18 about the eyes of our imagination being opened up and knowing the hope of his calling. Pray that practically every day. Practically every day in the secret place. You good? (laughs) Are you awakened tonight? (laughs) Let's stand and then we're going to, I'm going to, let me pray for you guys and impart into you tonight and then I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Suzanne. No? Okay. So another 25 minutes? Yeah. 
kidding. But thank you for giving me the extra time. I, I'm, I didn't know that. I apologize. I was thinking, hey. And, and so anyway, let's just pray. Just, I want you to just hold up your hands. Let's just receive for just a minute. I really want to impart passion into you tonight to be alone with him. Even first love fire tonight. It needs to be imparted into you tonight. Say, I receive right now all that you have for me. I receive this impartation of passion, of first love fire. I let go of the weight of the world. I let go of all the cares. I let go of all the concerns and I step into my place in you. You're all that I want. Father, I bless I bless your sons and your daughters tonight. We give you glory. Father, we see through your eyes and we can see sons and daughters that are arising. There's no lack of fulfillment in your eyes. You see your sons and your daughters arising in you. So we impart right now courage and hope and passion into your sons and your daughters right now. I baptize every single person right now, tonight, with the spirit of adoption. I remove that orphan spirit and that spirit of rejection. We break agreement with that tonight. And we receive, Holy Spirit, your adoption. We receive our inheritance in you. Father, we're not going back. Say, I'm not going back. I have been redeemed. (laughs) And I'm not going back. Father, we love you. I am part even right now the passion of the secret place that was awakened in me through a man and now through me I am part that passion to be alone with you to awake in the night seasons to awake in the morning and sing you love songs and to be after your heart father I thank you that this is going to be a church that's going to be a city that's set on a hill that we're going to be a city that's set on a hill that's lit up not because of anything but because you're our first love and because hope has been awakened in us <laughs> and we've become the revival we give you the praise and we bless this house tonight we bless our pastors tonight we bless this staff tonight And even now I release encouragement into the staff and into our pastors tonight. I remove any weight, any snare, any hindrance right now. And I release your encouragement, Lord. I thank you that you're taking off that spirit of heaviness and you've given us that garment of praise. We exchange that tonight. We bless Pastor Feldshaw tonight and all that he does. We bless that man and we honor him. We love you, Lord. Amen.